Hello there, everyone. Um, what I'm talking about today is chickweed, which there's a pretty picture of it out there. It is an annual. There's a lot of health benefits included with this plant, vitamins, minerals, nutrients, and as an added bonus, it also decreases insect damage when it's put next to other plants. That's pretty cool, huh? The leaves are edible. You can use them on sandwiches, salads, pestos. They're really good with eggs and tomatoes. They kind of boost up the flavor. They have a mild lettuce kind of taste. You can also eat the stems and the flowers, but if you do so, you want to put them in a cooked ingredient, soup, stew, something like that. Um, what do I want to tell you? It is a natural diuretic. And if you wish to use it that way, you would combine it with dandelion and parsley. It is also a natural astringent. One of the really cool things about this plant is it will draw out splinters. You can take the fresh leaf and you want to kind of smush it till it's juicy and put it on where the splinter is. Or if you have made a tincture, you can dilute that down as well and put it on there and it will actually cause the splinter to draw itself out. And once you get the splinter out as a benefit, then you're going to put some more of it on there and it will help your wound because it has a cooling and drying effect on wounds, skin eruptions, minor burns, insect bites, eczema, even with gout, and the burn that you get from stinging nettle. Also, itchy and sore skin, you can throw you can throw the leaves in your bath water. You can make an infusion where you're putting leaves in water and letting them steep for a while and just toss that right in your bath water. Um, this plant has vitamin C, vitamin B complex, and potassium in it. Really good, really good product. What else do I need to tell you? I wrote down some notes so I don't forget anything. It doesn't refrigerate well, nor can I really get it to dehydrate well. Now, someone else may have had better, better success with that, but not me because it just turns to straw. And by the time that it does that, you've really lost all the, the benefits of it, and it does look just like straw. Um, let me see what else I have to tell you. In China, they use it to cool fevers for acne, for a healthy milk flow after birth, to regulate menstrual cycles, for irritated eyes. I think, you know, it's an all-around herb. You can make uh, balms. You can make salves. You can make use it for vinegar and apple cider vinegar, for instance, to tone down the high acidic content that's in there. You can use it in tinctures as well to prolong it so that when you don't have it through the winter, you know, you can have it in your whatever way you choose to use it. For a tincture, you're just going to do a one-to-one -one ratio. Herb plus alcohol slash vinegar slash glycerin because I talked about that one already. Um, for vinegar, which you're going to see me do coming up, you're just going to fill your bottle up with a lot of the herb, pour vinegar over it. I'm going to let it sit for a few weeks, and then I'm going to test taste it and see if maybe the apple cider vinegar is a little bit mellowed out for me. You can do an herbal oil. This is really not one you want to throw in the window and let it sit for several weeks. They want you to do it on, on a stove top, which would be just very slow simmering it. There's all different methods, so if you're interested in doing that, please check out some of them so you know which one that you yourself would prefer. I also have read that chickens really love this stuff. Now, I don't have chickens, but I am in chicken envy. That's why I really love a lot of y'all's um, YouTube channels. I'm, I'm loving when y'all show me the chickens. I just, you know, just something I really want very badly. Um, so maybe those that have that have actually fed this to poultry, maybe I'll have somebody on my YouTube that's actually done that and they can verify it. That would be really cool. 
as with all things with herbs, it is possible for allergic reaction. So please, before you go putting this in your system or doing anything with it, test it on your skin. Take a leaf and crumble it up and maybe do a quarter size, rub it on a quarter size patch of your skin and make sure that you do not have a reaction to this plant. As I said, and as I say, actually, really, I think in every video, I am not a doctor, but I do doctor myself and I do find success in it. So I've got some pictures rolling up here to show you how it looks like. I don't pick it from outside. I actually keep it in pots so that it's very handy for me. That planter right there is pretty close to being empty. I have enough for one more project. So I have a video coming up that as soon as I shut up here. So I hope you all will try it and I hope it will help you with whatever need that you might have. Okay, onward with the video. Okay, y'all, so wherever I left off at, because this is a multi-parted parted video, never, you know, excuse the coffee grounds and the romaine starting over there. Coffee grounds are to fight my little terrorist that's outside, a.k.a. a squirrel, that is really trying to tear things up. Um, what I have here, which I already showed you in the first part of the video that I know, is chickweed. And I just went out to the plant, and um, let me move this closer in case stuff doesn't show, because I don't know. Um, what I'm doing is I'm putting some in this bottle. I'm going to be adding apple cider vinegar to it, because it does mellow out the flavor a little bit. And to this one, I am going to be adding oil to make an herbal oil. So that when the winter time comes, I still have access to that. And then I can use this to make a salve or a balm. So I'm not going to take the flowers off of these. I don't mind if they get crushed. Because that's just going to release their properties. I've probably got this way too full. But I am just going to finish stuff in jars. It'll be so soggy by the time, it time that it has to come out. It's not going to matter. Yes, I've got a popsicle stick to help shove them down in there without trying to make such a mess. But I do that really well. I am very good at making a mess. Uh, these leftovers I'm just going to throw in my jar. And I'm just going to keep going until I get this jar probably about to here. And I'm going to um, pack the jar for, this, for the uh, herbal oil. Um, pretty tight as well and I'll be back when that is done okay and I'm back got the jar pretty well loaded got this one pretty well loaded this one I'm going to do by heat but I'm just kind of putting it in a jar to get the measurements I want and um, then I will store the original oil in here if you don't know how to do an herbal heat oil there are a lot of ways and it's really easy to Google and find out um, which one you prefer. I just usually put it in like a double boiler and just let it kind of simmer throughout the day. If the oil that's in here would start to fry, you've lost it and all the nutrients are dead. Some people do it in a crock pot. Um, there are various ways so you know just check how to make a heat infused oil and figure out the one that you would like best for that but for now we're still gonna add everything we need to including the oil so I kinda get a measurement of um, exactly what we're gonna be doing so this is apple cider vinegar homemade and we're just gonna fill her up Apple cider vinegar kind of bothers my tummy sometimes. So, I am hoping that one will melt it out a little bit. Wrong lid. This one. And I am just going to leave this sit um, undisturbed for 
uh, probably four weeks. I'm going to shake it up every so often. Just If the herb starts showing through way up here, just keep it topped off so that, you know, you don't have any mold or anything like that issues. Just keep it topped off if it needs it. And um, other than that, like I said, you can tincture this using alcohol. You need at least 100 proof and it will last really a long time. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. Have a wonderful day. God bless you.